Um, so uh, we have Tutu Di Mofta from the University of Edinburgh, who's going to give his second lecture on 3D gauge theories, vortices, and vertex algebras. Thanks, Nina. Um, <clears throat> so the, the original plan for today was, was to introduce vertex algebras into this 3D PQFT game. Um, and I had a, a bit of a change of heart um, at some point last night, uh, realizing that it might be nonsensical to like, just say a lot of technical things about vertex algebras for this audience. Um, so, uh, so I will mention them at the end as, as a tool. Um, and instead, I, I will say a lot of nonsensical things about categories of line operators. Um, so, um, so the the player, the main player in today's lecture, uh, is um, going to be line operators. Um, I'm going to recall uh, from from yesterday, um, we expect uh, in a three D PQFT that. Um, that Z, the TQFT functor, applied to a circle um, is uh, a certain one category, certain category. Which will be called C. Um, and in physics terms, this is the, the thing that's called the category of line operators. Um, and if we draw physics pictures, um, the, the objects are, are supported on, on lines in, in 3D space. And the way the circle comes up is that it's the link of, of a line in, in three dimensions. Um, if this is a tensor category where the tensor product comes from a pair of pants. And this may all sort of look familiar from, um, say, for Benius algebras in, in, in two dimensional TQFT, if you've played around with A models. Um, is like th 3D analog of quantum product. Um, so what is what is a 3D? Uh, what it, what is that of a pair of pants? Now uh, it's it's a map from two circles to one circle, um, and gives us in principle the tensor product and the physics picture. collision of lines. Um, I should have said why this was a category as well. Um, so in TQFT terms, Z of just an annulus, um, though it's to match the physics picture, it's useful to uh, think of that annulus as, as, I'm trying to put all these pictures on one board and they're getting very small. Um, Think of that annulus as sort of a, a wine barrel um, with, with the top and bottom removed. Uh, this is the Hom functor. Um, Hom in C it takes as input two objects at the top and bottom uh, and gives us a vector space. Uh, and in physics, we would say, um, given two lines, um, this is the space of local operators at their junction. Um, and I, right, tensor category, uh, there's an identity object 
uh, which is um, just Z of a disk. Uh, one way to think about Z of a disk uh, is as, uh, so a, a disk is a cobordism between nothing and the circle. Um, so functor from vect from the trivial category uh, to our category C that sends a one dimensional vector space to this special object in C that's the tensor identity. And in the physics picture, that's the, the trivial, the empty line operator. Um, and finally, the whole thing is braided. Um, and the, the physics picture is somehow, I think a lot cleaner that they're, they're totally equivalent. So, um, across them. So in three-dimensional space, we can braid lines. Um, what is the braiding really? It's, it's a certain morphism between a tensor product of two lines in one order and the tensor product of the other order. Um, and I had sort of drawn yesterday the TQFT picture for that. So there's a 3D cobordism now. Um, uh, relating to pairs of pants with the inner cuffs uh, rotated around and it looks sort of like this. Well, except that's all happening on the inside. Um, so I'm just going to say this, this defines the braiding. Uh, and here, I mean, uh, optimistically defines the braiding because in, in our case, uh, it's yet, yet to be established on mathematical grounds that at least the, the twists of the gauge theories I've been interested in uh, actually define fully extended TQFTs. Um, so that, that was actually the, the goal of uh, the project I wanted to mention today. Um, and it's just work I've been do doing with various people over the past few years. Um, okay, um, so why, why do I care? Um, in relation to yesterday's talk and to maybe vortices, um, higher levels in TQFT um, come from lower ones. Um, so sort of Z, Z on, on um, higher dimensional manifolds, Um, can be reconstructed, should be reconstructed on lower dimension of manifolds. And that, that's sort of the, the philosophy of this thing called the cohortism hypothesis as well. And it's probably what motivated Justin, uh, a bunch of us, uh, to, to ask what, what is he of a point? In these theories, and he'll talk about that um, later this week. Um, like, if, if you if you really really want to get as low as possible, you ask about z of a point. Uh, but with z of a line or z of s one, you can still do quite a lot. Um, so, in in particular, um, one can get state spaces on surfaces and actions by local operators on them. Um, from, from the data of this putative category. Um, so for example, um, this is just this writing out standard TQFT gains. Um, Z of a two sphere uh, in category terms uh, is Uh, is endomorphisms of the identity line, just because you get a two sphere by gluing two disks together. Um, and the disk is the identity line and the gluing is the hom functor. Um, um, I will mention one, one thing here though. Um, the, the categories that will show up for us are derived categories. Uh, if we express them, or they're DG categories. 
if we express them as derived categories of something abelian, um, it's the thing to, to connect with later in the talk. Um, the, this is this is of some full X group um, in in an abelian category. Uh, uh, another really simple example: um, the vector space attached to the torus um, uh, in this derived setting uh, is Hochschild homology of uh, of, of the category. Um, all of, sorry, claim. Um, all of the actions of like EFN Coulomb algebras on vortex moduli spaces and quantum cohomology that um, I mentioned last time that have been appearing throughout throughout this workshop. Um, all, all, all of those actions um, should sort of factor through this category of lines. Um, this, this, in a sense, um, um, I, I want to say this, this categorifies that whole picture. Um, it maybe factor through is a better word, um, but. Um, Um, it's, it's really like the data of, um, of those actions goes into certain objects and homs in, in this category. Um, um, so actions of algebras on some homologies of vortex moduli spaces. Um, like state like vortices associated to a smooth surface or um, the verma modules that I mentioned last time when the surface is actually a disk um, or the quantum cohomology stuff, um, variant quantum cohomology um, sort of factor through See, um, and I, I'm not going to say a whole lot about that, uh, but it, just to give one slight further intuition about how that, the, what I mean by factor through, um, like the, the quantum cohomology story had to do with a boundary condition. And I drew a, I sort of drew, drew a picture like this of say, your G gauge theory in the bulk and some vector space with a G action on the boundary uh, and the BFN algebra um, or functions on the bulk Coulomb branch acting on um, equivariant quantum cohomology of W. Um, so W ends up defining some object in the category of lines. Um, and that's expected to be a Frobenius algebra object. Um, and so you, you, you take what you're familiar with in two-dimensional PQFT and, and just throw the word object on. Um, um, and the action comes from end of one. That's, that's the, uh, this is Z of S2, it's the bulk algebra um, acting on, uh, in the natural way on, on HOM between one and this Frobenius object. Um, okay. um, should also say that um, vortices aside, um, my hope in, in studying this category is that it um, would give maybe a nicer way to construct three manifold invariants uh, by generalizing 
like old, old tools of Resh Tikhin and Turayev uh, from quantum topology um, to, to, to this setting. Um, it's so well. Uh, w is a bound. Well, W is the data of a boundary condition, um, and ba boundary conditions determine lines by wrapping them on a circle. Um, and so the the physics picture that corresponds to this, like, I, I, I the quantum cohomology is showing up as local operators on the boundary. Um, and I, I can take this boundary condition and. Um, make it into a cigar, um, bend it, um, so that it ends up looking like that. And from far away, this is a half line. Um, like the, the line operator I want um, is what happens just by wrapping this boundary condition on an empty cylinder and zooming out. Um, and the uh, the local operators are here, and that's uh, this is hum between the line defined by the boundary and the trivial line. Um, Justin will talk about two categories. Um, there's a I think this is a an uplift of a churn uh, of a churn class. Um, it, it's it's trace. It, there, there's a trace functor from the two category of boundary conditions to the one category of boundary conditions that is at play here. Um, cool. Um, so, um, final bit of motivation. Um, there's this mirror symmetry thing that I that I mentioned that is supposed to relate um, sort of vor vortexy Dirac equation analytic things to something more algebraic in three dimensions, um, and it might be cleaner um, to prove mirror symmetry for for categories, for, say for graded tensor categories, um, and then get as a consequence um, a Assuming one can make sense of all these sort of decategorifications and getting state spaces out of categories, uh, prove as a consequence of mirror symmetry for braided tensor categories, um, equivalence of, of various vector spaces and actions on them. Um, so, um, and and the, the thing I want to get to by the end of the talk is is such an equivalence uh, of braided tensor categories in in abelian series. Um, so I didn't say much about the B side. Uh, I talked about the A side last time. Um, so let me let me fill in a little gap. Um, for there, there are two perspectives. In two intuitively useful perspectives on the B twist of a theory with gauge group G and representation B. And let me remind you uh, what I mean. So the physical data is a compact group that's acting um, on a quaternionic representation P star B. That, that's the notation in G is the classified group, which acts symplectically. Um, um, so one, one roughly, Um, uh, the 3D theory um, can be thought of as Rosansky Witten theory. Uh, with target um, the T, T star V symplectically reduced by the reductive group G um, as, and if, if you actually want to get sensible results out of this, uh, you need to think of this um, uh, as a derived stack. 
um, and and push through some machinery and, and derived algebraic geometry and, and get uh, reasonable answers. Um, the other way to think about um, the B twist of this theory um, that is maybe more physically meaningful, maybe, um, Um, it's a Trent Simons theory. Uh, but not for a compact group, as Trent Simons was um, in, in introduced um, many decades ago. Uh, but rather, uh, it's Trent Simons for a super Lie algebra. A G V um, that uh, looks like T star of the Lie algebra of our group um, uh, plus a, a parity shifted or fermionic version of the vector space E. Um, spelling that out a bit more. Uh, that's a copy of G. Uh, a fermionic copy of V, a fermionic copy of V dual, and a dual copy of G. Um, now it's, it's, just, it's sort of beautifully explicit. Um, so I'll, I'll mention um, some, I'll mention what the brackets are. Um, if I um, did, uh, take elements N and G <clears throat> psi plus, Psi minus and E in the other bits, um, <clears throat> the super Lie algebra has relations where N bracketed with anything uh, is, is just the action. Of it's the, the, the infinitesimal action of G um, on either V or V dual or, or the coadjoint rep. Um, and psi plus psi minus um, is this, the schematic way to say this is that it's the moment map. So complex or algebraic moment map for G acting on T star V as an element of G dual. Um, and so um, I, think I like I can write down formulas, but I'd rather just see what it is. So, so um, the anti commutator of the two odd elements uh, gives something linear in E um, in G dual. And that linear thing is, is the, the moment map of, of the action. Um, in defining a Trent Simons theory, one also needs to uh, talk about a level. Um, and there's a level here. So, what, what is the level in Trent Simons? It's, it's a normalization for the killing form in the case of a compact group. Um, here on this algebra, it's, it's just a, it's a trace form um, on, on the algebra um, and the level. Um, is um, the the trace in representation B minus the trace in the adjoint rep on on the the G part of that algebra uh, plus the natural pairing um, between Uh, G and G dual plus the natural pairing uh, between V and V dual. That, that gives a trace form. Uh, and the only non-trivial part is, is this bit. Um, okay. Um, I, 
I, I have, yes, I've been finding this a good way to think about, about the B-twist, especially when asking things like, like what's, the, what's the category of lines? Because roughly, as in, I, and I'm mentioning Trent Simons, in case that's familiar, uh, roughly what one would expect is that line operators uh, just come from representations of, of this algebra. And that, that is approximately correct. Um, okay. Last, am I too far over? I'll go, I'll go back over here. Ah, uh, these are the only brackets. Um, and in particular, as Nick says, you have sent them. Um, so, oh, sorry, E is, not, e is central if, if, uh, if G is abelian. Um, yes. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, it's in the coadjuvant. Yes. We've been, I guess, thinking a lot about abelian cases and are used to, to having E central. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, last thing I want to pull up um, uh, is, is how mirror symmetry actually acts. Um, 3D mirror symmetry. Um, and here I will specialize to abelian theories because they behave in an especially nice way. Um, quiver, quiver gauge theories also behave very nicely under mirror symmetry. Uh, and in, in general, there's, there's no um, there's no general rule. Um, um, so uh, for, I'll call simple abelian gauge theories. Um, and by simple abelian gauge theory, I mean that the group, uh, compact group is U into the R. Um, acting faithfully on C to the N. Um, one could also play the sorts of games that Matt was discussing in his talk, uh, where the, the group maybe has some discrete factors or it doesn't act quite faithfully. Uh, and then one gets into uh, fun games with high, higher symmetries. Um, anyway, the, this, the, this family just plays very well with mirror symmetry. Um, um, given such a faithful action, uh, the data of the theory is uh, entirely encoded in, in, in what the action is. There's a weight matrix. So that's some n by r matrix that just encodes the weights of, of each of the E1s on, on CN. Um, and that weight matrix um, faithfulness tells you that fits into an exact sequence. Um, from ZR to ZN. And that has a co-kernel. Uh, that's ZN minus R this map um, tau. Um, then um, mirror symmetry is dualization of, of the exact sequence. This was known a long time ago, like in the mid 90s. Um, so the mirror theory um, has a dual gauge group, U1 to the N minus R, dual representation, the same, and weight matrix, dual weight matrix, 
um, that's just, so by, by dualize the sequence, I mean take transpose and turn the arrows around. Um, and the, so the dual weight matrix is, is tau dual or tau transpose. Um, this is a nice closed class under the action of mirror symmetry. Um, the, there are things called Higgs and Coulomb branches attached. Um, to such theories, um, the Higgs branches are, uh, are just the symplectic quotients that I've been showing up. Uh, and these in the abelian case are hypertoric varieties. Um, the Coulomb branches are things implicitly defined by the, say the, the BFN construction that I mentioned last time, uh, but in the abelian case, since you just dualize the sequence, it's easy to say what the Coulomb branches are. Um, they're T star V dual, mod G dual. Um, these are Yale duals of, of the hypertoric varieties showing up there. Um, that's a subject that's also been well studied. Okay. Um, the Simplest example of an abelian mirror pair um, is also uh, kind, kind of famous for other reasons. Um, um, so the simplest example is taking the group to be trivial and V to be C, and that's 3D mirror. Uh, to taking the group, I guess in the complexified sense it's C star, uh, <clears throat> and the space to be C. <clears throat> um, the, no, what I'm about to say, I'll keep this U1. Um, the B twist on this side Um, is in Simon's theory for an algebra that's sometimes called PSL one slash one, but it's it's this sort of stupidest um, um, algebra imaginable. It's generated by two um, two odds generators that that anti commutes to zero. Um, um, yeah, it's just tiny, tiny algebra. Um, so PSL one slash one, um, and um, it this Trin Simons theory on a three manifold um, with some important modifications involving some background connections on the three manifold that I don't want to discuss, um, it gives torsion. Um, it gives a uh, Ray Singer torsion of, of M3. Um, and on the dual side, the A twist um, is, is 3D cyber Witten theory. It's the, the classic case of 3D cyber witten theory, not, not the generalizations I mentioned, um, where again, with some suitable regularization, uh, Z of M3 is a cyber witten invariant. Um, and the connection here is, is the Meng Taub's theorem. Um, Donaldson. Uh, turned the A twist in this case into a TQFT um, at levels three and two. Um, so he, he defined state spaces for surfaces. They involve vortices um, and glued those together. Um, and so the, like the thing that I'm trying to do is uh, sort of go one category level up and, and get, get line operators on this side. Um, it's, it's actually quite easy in this example, but 
doing it more, more generally uh, has been challenging. Um, okay. Um, so, um, Let me maybe to, to tie ideas together, let me continue this, this simple example one category level further. Um, I think may, maybe having an idea of how things should work is better than getting technical. Um, um, so as I said the, the categories here are, are well known. Um, the uh, as an, as a category, um, I can give it to you as a braided tensor thing as well. But um, the um, so c continuing the example. Uh, the category in the B twist uh, is just modules or an exterior algebra with two generators. Um, or rather that, that's an abelian category and then one should take the derived category of that to get the full thing. Um, the um, identity object, um, so, so it's, it's it's actually, it's this thing with the stupid fusion product that just comes from having modules for an, uh, um, an anti-commutative algebra. Um, the identity object is just the trivial module. Um, there's braiding um, that, like, there, there's, there's an R matrix around uh, that looks like the exponential of Psi plus tensor psi minus minus psi minus tensor psi plus, um, which is maybe I don't know how appreciated appreciated that had been, um, and one can pull out state spaces from this. Um, so z of z of a two sphere, um, I said was supposed to be xed uh, between one and one. And in this case, uh, for modules of an exterior algebra, x between the trivial module and itself um, is just polynomials into, um, into even variables, um, which is functions on T star V um, as it should be in the B twist. Um, and Hochschild homology of this really simple category um, is generated by derivations. So H H H zero is the co-center. H H one um, is is isomorphic to uh, it's it's a cohomology that's derivations, but that's a really useful way to think about it. Um, uh, so the de derivations of this uh, involve it's, it's shifted derivations. They involve two even variables that look like derivatives of the two odd things uh, and the full Hochschild homology, those words are useful for anyone, um, is uh, ends up being polynomials in two even things and two odd things. Um, and that matches quite beautifully what one might get from, from vortices, which is why I bring the example up. Um, this is uh, something that uh, Andrea and Matz and he and Kim discussed in some of their work. Um, so on the A side, um, compare, compare this to um, sort of vortices. Um, for the gauge theory with V1 acting on T star C, um, Symplectic vortices for this with uh, a stability condition 
just end, end up looking like vortices for U1 acting on C, and one ends up in, like, this is, it's called the abelian Higgs model. Um, it's just like the, the simplest example of vortices that anyone learns about. Um, um, so, uh, and the vortex moduli space on P1, act on any curve, um, is Uh, is a disjoint union of symmetric products of, of the curve. And when the curve is P1, that's a disjoint union of, uh, of PD. Um, and cohomology of this is supposed to match the B side, and it, and it does quite, quite nicely. Um, um, co cohomology of this. Uh, is the degree D polynomials illustrated as CXY in degree D. Um, and the same with the torus. Um, the vortex moduli space for the torus is, is symmetric product of, of the torus. Uh, in the abelian Higgs model, and its its cohomology matches matches this thing. Um, okay, um, so I've cleverly given myself five minutes to talk about vertex algebras. Um, the what what do these categories actually look like, and what have we done? Um, C. Um, for, for one of these simple abelian theories, uh, as on the board on the left, um, the expectation in the B twist uh, physically um, that, that was spelled out in a paper with uh, Justin and, and Nick and uh, Mike Tarassi, um, we expect this to contain what physically we'd call Wilson lines uh, that are labeled by um, by weights of the group, which are elements in Z ZR, um, such that X, thinking of this as an abelian category, X of uh, between Wilson lines, um, should look like polynomials on T star V uh, that have weight mu prime minus mu under the, the G action and degree D. Um, I, th that's, that's the physical expectation. Um, and, and then it has a few other things. Um, on the A side, uh, one would similarly expect um, that the category contains vortex lines. Um, these are singular vortices, not, not smooth ones, um, where the matter fields get a pull uh, at some point. Um, and I'm, well, I'm going, going to say something that's maybe tautological. The vortex lines in this case um, are labeled by, by dual weights um, that end up being elements of Z and minus R. Um, and there are similar expected relations among the X uh, of, of their X. Um, and so what we actually do is, is prove um, we, we define the, the full actual categories and, and we prove that they're equivalent as graded tensor categories. 
Um, um, but the way we define them is with vertex algebras. Um, and who is we? Uh, this is um, uh, Andrew Ballin uh, and Thomas Kreutzig. Um, uh, in work that should hopefully come out in this week or next. Um, um, so we uh, define beta tensor categories CA and CB um, in, in a rigorous way um, as module categories uh, for um, certain logarithmic vertex algebras. Uh, VA and VB, which, um, uh, which, which had been known. So these, these come from work of Cristela and Gaiotto. Um, and we um, sort of, um, the, the two main results um, are that the vertex algebras um, are actually equivalent for for a 3D mirror pair. This is all, all in the context of, of abelian theories. Um, um, I guess, any, yeah, there, there is some work that needed to be done in constructing the B side vertex algebra, but that, that's details. Um, um, and, and the categories are Um, our, our abelian equivalent. Um, I said the derived categories are equivalent. Um, and the thing that would be really cool to, to do in the future uh, is to start relating all of this to state spaces on surfaces um, and, uh, and, and vortices and quantum cohomology and, um, and, and all of that. Any questions for Tudor? Oh, sorry. It's it's for for any any uh, uh, any simple abelian mirror pair, and uh, any anything of the type that's showing up on the board on the left. Um, the the non-abelian statement is much harder because no one knows what. Um, the, the A algebra is easy to define, but it's defined as some BRST cohomology that's impossible to analyze. And the, the B algebra um, ha hasn't, hasn't been fully defined yet. Um, it's some, uh, so, so, sorry, I should like, what is this B algebra just for um, anyone who's seen vertex algebras before? I said the bulk theory is transcendence um, in the B twist. Uh, you would expect that the B algebra is some version of Katz Moody for, for the super algebra that I had written down. Um, but exactly what version it is is, is not easy in the non abelian case. And even in the abelian case, it involves some extension that, that turns it into a WZW analog of that Katz Moody algebra. Um, anyway, um, and so I don't yet have anything useful to say about non abelian theory. Can you say something more concrete about these uh, singular vort vortices that you mentioned in C sure. category CI? Yeah. Um, so so um, what, one way to, to get some intuition for like, what, what the objects in this category are, um, are uh, is, is to look at singular solutions of, of the vortex equations um, in the neighborhood of a point. Um, and th those are going to come from meromorphic singularities um, in, in the sections. So, um, so this is dealing with um, yeah. So the, the Higgs field is meromorphic, is everything. 
yeah so um so so the the sorts of things we're looking at are, are maps from some infinitesimal punctured disk uh to you want g, g bundles on a punctured disk and sections of a v and v dual bundle Um, and, and the way you get singularities is by asking what, what can happen to, to the sections of, of V and V dual. So, yeah, so yes, the, the Higgs field. Um, um, so um, objects in TA to do with singularities. D star V section near a point. I I can. Yes. Um, um, I I can actually say what the singularity is. I think I'm going to do that rather than saying the word Lagrangian. Um, um, and so, so in 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 the abelian case. Um, these sorts of singularities that appear. Um, yeah. uh, I need to choose a section of this exact sequence. Sigma section. Um, and then the, the basic singularities give X a polar zero that looks like Z to the uh, section applied to this dual weight. Um, and Y gets a singularity that looks like Z to minus the section uh, applied, applied to that dual weight. In the bit twist, uh, you have Wilson lines, right? Yes. And the infinitely many of them, the whole uh, lattice. The so there's no truncation or identification like in the Chern Simons case where um, there's on the K Wilson lines and mm -hmm. yeah so so th th this is one aspect of the story that is um, fun and not well maybe it's uh, straightforward how to develop it but hasn't been fully developed so um, so so no um, in what I talked about there's no truncation. Um, that also means that there's a one form symmetry around in the topological twist. It's true. Um, um, the, you do get a truncation if you turn on FI parameters and start to like resolve um, the Higgs branch or turn on mass parameters and start to, start to resolve the Coulomb branch. Um, and the, yes, okay, I'll, I'll just say that. Um, so, so the, the category collapses to something much smaller once, once you resolve. But, but you don't, sorry, I think what you're actually asking is you get a truncation that has something to do with the Chern Simons level, and the answer is no. So, thank Tudor again for his uh, keynote lecture.